Yo, let's go talk in today's video. I got the how to make Sukuna's fire arrow. This was um suggested or requested in my video request channel, my Discord server link in the description by one of my uh Discord subscribers. Shout out to them and stuff. So pretty sure everybody remembers Sukuna's fire arrow or flame arrow, whatever you want to call it, from um uh actually I don't even remember what episode. I don't even remember what episode, but I just know he, he it was when he was fighting Gojo. It was just when he was I mean not Gojo, Jogo. When he's fighting Jogo, stuff the classic you know flame arrow scene and stuff. So I pretty much made a little flame arrow. Uh, took inspiration from Sorcerer's Battleground. I just kept watching other people use the attack and use the attack myself to see how I wanted to make it. And yeah, so let's go ahead and get straight into it. Okay, so first things first, we're going to need a remote event. So let's insert a remote event into replicated storage. Let's name it remote event combat event, right? then inside of server storage we have our flame effects i didn't make these i got these from the toolbox you guys can literally search up sukuna flame arrow or sukuna fire arrow and you guys should find you guys should find them and stuff um I, let me see the toolbox let me see what did i search i think sukuna fire um so yeah okay so i searched sukuna fire and you're looking for bad fire arrow sukuna right that's where i got the flame arrow from right as for the flame effect itself, uh, this I got from searching up Sukuna something. I searched, like, I, I can't really, I think I just searched up, yeah, I just searched Sukuna and then I, yeah, okay, here. I went to Sukuna effects, right? So I went to Sukuna effects, um, and then I got it from, or wait, no, it, never mind, it was not Sukuna effects. Okay, never mind, you know what I said. Um, where was it? Not bad fire arrow. It's one of these. Okay, yeah, no, it's not that. Um. It was one of these Sukuna things. Yeah, the, okay, the giveaway, I think. Or maybe, maybe it wasn't a giveaway. Yeah, I don't know. The point is, I got it from one of these. I got it from one of these. I just don't remember which one. Oh, okay. Wait, no, it wasn't this. Okay, the point is, go to the toolbox, find your effects if you don't have your own effects, right? Because I didn't make any of these, right? So we have our flame effect. This is the effect, like the burning effect of when a player gets hit with arrow. And then of course, this is just a regular arrow. The only adjustments I made to this was um, I added a world constraint to it. Well, I did the flame arrow to another part that I named the hitbox. This is of course hitbox detection, so we'll know uh, if it makes contact, you know, with the player and stuff. Here are the properties for the hitbox. Um, so simply just create a part, insert the part into the uh, flame arrow. And then, like I said, use the weld constraint to weld the two parts together. Make sure hitbox is massless and not anchored. And yeah, you're okay. I'm good. And yeah, you should be good to go. So once you've done that, name it flame arrow. And then you have your flame effect. Name that flame effect. And then you're gonna go ahead and insert that in server storage. The only reason I even have this set as a part is because attachments have to be parented to a part. We don't even actually need the real part. We just need the attachment. Right. So you just leave that inside of server storage. Then in sound service, I have this sound. Uh. I actually got this from the toolbox, like someone, like like a model, not like I found it myself. So I honestly don't know what this is. I'm pretty sure it's like some type of explosion. Just type in like explosion bullets or something, and you'll probably find a good sound for it. All right. So after that, we can go ahead and get into the scripting. Or actually, let's go ahead and knock out. Let's insert a rig so we can test. Um, was it R15 or R6? I can't. I honestly don't remember. What well, is R6? I don't know. I honestly, I can't, I can't even remember. Honestly, I, think I swear I think it was R six. Anyway, I'm trying to remember which one of my knockback animation was for, but I'm pretty sure it's R six. Anyway, so we're gonna insert a rig so we can test. Right, we're gonna open up Starter Player, insert a local script into Starter Player scripts. You guys can go ahead and name the script Combat Script, and in parentheses put local. We can delete print Hello World. We can create three variables first. Let's get the user input service. We're gonna say local UIS is equal to game. It's service user input service. Then I'm going to create a variable for the combat remote event. So local combat event is equal to game the replicated storage right for child combat event. Lastly, I'm going to get the local player. So local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. This is so that we can get the player's mouse. So we need a couple of things. So first, we're gonna say uis dot input begin connect function and parentheses put input comma processed. Enter. You're gonna say if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard and not process, which pretty much means the player is not typing in chat. Enter. You're gonna say if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code dot e. 
you guys can go whatever coupon you want. I have a video on cooldowns. So if you guys are interested to see how you can make cooldowns, I have a video on that. Yeah, then we're going to send over the information to the server side. We're going to say combat event, fire server, in quotation marks, the name of the event will be flame arrow or sukuna arrow, whatever you want to call it. Then comma, and we're going to say player, get mouse, dot hit, dot position. First, we're going to send over the mouse position. Then we're going to send over the, um, the, um, the, the mouse, uh, C frame. And lastly, we're going to send over the, uh, player's, um, mouse, uh, look vector. Boom. Just take that, right? Then we can go ahead and insert a server script into the server script service, right? I have my knockback animation here. You can simply just click insert, click the plus icon, click animation, name it knockback, throw your animation ID in there. Um, literally just type, you can get, you can actually get this animation. It, it works for R6. You can get this animation by, um, going to the toolbox and just typing in knockback, knockback animation and you'll find it. So yeah, so just put that inside of the script, right? And then we're going to have, I mean, the knockback animation is, uh, it's, um, it's optional because there isn't actually any knockback. It's just, we just want the effect of like, oh, the player just got hit by the fire. So that's really just it. So we're going to say combat script and in parentheses put server, right? We're going to delete hello world we're going to get a couple services first we need twin service local ts equal to game it service twin service then i'm going to get the sound service i'm going to say local ss is equal to game get service sound service right then i'm going to get the debris service local ds is equal to game get service debris right and then lastly of course we're going to get the combat road event so local combat event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for a child Combat event. Then I'm going to say combat event dot on server event connect function. Oh, sorry, connect function. In parentheses, you're going to put PLR, which is short for the player. Then enter. Then we're going to first get the player's character. We're going to say local, like the character who's attacking. So we're going to say, oh, that's nice about character. We're going to say character is equal to player dot character. We're going to say if event type. Oh, sorry. Oh, my fault, my fault that. I forgot that to add other things up here. Okay, so comma, event type, arg1, comma, arg2, comma, arg3. Argument, short for argument, argument one, argument two, argument three. So we're gonna say if event type is equal to quotation marks, flame, arrow, enter, right? We're going to create a variable for the mouse look vector. We're gonna say local mouse look vector is equal to argument number three, right? Then you're gonna clone the flame arrow. Local flame arrow is equal to sorry, not sorry. You're gonna say game the server storage dot flame arrow clone. Once you've cloned it, you're gonna set the C frame. You're gonna say flame arrow dot C frame is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot C frame right. And then you're gonna say times. And then you're gonna say times C frame dot from. I think axis angle, yeah. From axis angle, oh, let's see. From axis angle, mouse look vector, comma, and I just put ten. You guys can play around with this. Um, I was trying to get it so that the arrow is always facing straight. I don't think I got it hundred percent. It's like ninety five percent good, but yeah. But it moves pretty fast, so you can't really tell which direction it's facing and stuff. But anyway, lastly, we're gonna parent it. We're gonna say parent is equal to the workspace, right? And then we're going to set up the well, not really recasting, but more so like some steps towards recasting, even though we're not actually using recasting, if that makes sense. So first, let's create a variable for the start position. You guys know the start position, of course, is going to be character dot humanoid root part dot position, right? And then the end position, of course, would be art number one. That's the mouse position. And then we're going to set up the duration. Look at duration is equal to end. Oh, let me... And position minus start position and on the outside you're gonna say dot magnitude then divide it so I went with 65 the higher this number or I should say the greater the number the faster the arrow that the faster the arrow will move the, the lower the number the slower it moves and stuff so if you want it to go faster slower then increase decrease the number to your liking right then the mouse frame which is of course argument number two so mouse frame is equal to argument number two right then i'm going to set up the flame arrow tween so local flame arrow tween is equal to ts create the instance is of course the flame arrow comma tween info dot new you're going to put the durate oh sorry you're going to put the duration comma then you're going to put for easing style um i went with cubic comma dot and um oh just space 
So enum dot easing direction. Of course, we're gonna go without, right? Then in between the parentheses, comma, create a table, special brackets. And then you're gonna say C frame is equal to mouse C frame. And then we're going to place a tween, boom, right? Then we're gonna set up the damage function after we also add the sound effect. So we're gonna say SS dot arrow play. Then we're gonna set up the damage function. So I'm gonna say flame arrow dot hitbox. Remember, this is the point of the hitbox dot touch connect function in parentheses put hit. Then enter, you're gonna say if hit dot parent find first child in quotation marks gonna click humanoid so it's either an npc or a player and hit dot parent dot name is nil equal to player dot name to make sure of course we're not attacking ourselves then we're gonna create a variable for the enemy character local enemy character is equal to hit dot parent right then i'm going to clone the flame effect i'm gonna say local flame effect is equal to game that serves storage dot flame effect now I'm referencing the attachment, the name of the attachment, because we don't need the actual part itself. So the name of the attachment is just called A1. I'm gonna say A1 clone, right? And then I'm gonna say flame effect that parent. All you should have to say is enemy character that humanoid root part can parent it to the enemy. Enemy characters you want a root part, then we're gonna set up the knockback animation track if you had a knockback animation, you know, of course. So it's equal to enemy character dot humanoid load animation script regular brackets quotation marks then you can find your knockback animation right then you're going to say at play boom and for the last part we're going to use the debris service so first things first we're going to damage the player we're going to say enemy character humanoid health less than equal to 10 however much damage you want to do now remember since it's um since we are destroying the flame arrow because we're going to say flame arrow destroy if we're destroying the flame arrow you don't have to worry about a player getting double hit they can't get double hit because this function is triggered every time, every time you know the flame arrow is touched. But if, but if it's, but if the first function is triggered and we have, you know, like it's touched, and then we have to destroy, it's going to destroy it. So pretty much, it can only damage one player, right? So then we're going to say ds add item flame effect. You guys can go with however many seconds you want. I went with one second, seemed to work perfectly fine for me. Then I'm going to skip this in between these ends and then i'm going to say ds add item and then i'm going to say flame arrow comma duration the reason for this is so that of course you know if the flame arrow doesn't actually you know hit a player or anything we want it to still be destroyed if it doesn't hit a player or anything or an npc or whatever so we can go ahead and test as always if you guys want access to any of my scripts or models you guys can come either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description also was anyone else suffering like i know by the time you guys are watching this it's like damn near february or if not already february and stuff but like y'all see the date down here like how is the 16th it's the middle of january when it's just beyond cold outside i just want to know was anyone else suffering in the cold i'm just, just curious anyway so if you press e as you guys can see you well you can see in here obviously the further i, I step back you know you, you actually get to see it and stuff you see that you see the rig and i was right so it is our sixth but anyway so as you guys can see they're taking damage you see the flame arrow and they are uh what's What's the word? I'm just looking for nothing. I'm trying to think. Oh, wait. Why is it? Huh. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to change because I'm not going to. I did change this a little differently. I did it a little differently before I recorded. So the way I originally had it was flame arrow dot C frame. Even, I mean, even though it doesn't make a difference, this was just a solution I just tried. It doesn't make a difference because I'm just, I'm doing, like, I'm literally just multiplying what I already have. So it's like, it shouldn't honestly change anything. But um, if that produces better results, you guys can just do it like that. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, see? Like, it doesn't do, yeah, yeah, see? It doesn't change anything. So never mind. You don't worry about that. It, like, it doesn't change anything. It's still doing the same. But anyway, yeah. So if you guys need help or anything, you can join my Discord server. The link can be found in the description. Join my Roblox group as well. We're almost to 500 members. The Discord server has over 2,000 members. You guys should definitely still join. Thank you guys for all the love and support. I'm going to my videos. We're like halfway to 6,000 subscribers. Y'all going crazy without love. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.